Hey, welcome to Rise Church. Thanks so much for joining us online today. We believe that Jesus wants to do so much for you and through you, and we'd love to hear how he's working in your life. Please take a second to email your story to stories at rise-church.com. We hope you leave today feeling encouraged and uplifted. Enjoy the message. Well, today I got a stool on the stage, and anytime you know I got a stool on the stage, you know that things are gonna be a little more um, serious, and let me just explain to you what today is going to look like and really what the next couple weeks are going to look like leading up to Christmas. We're not kicking off a brand new series today. Uh, matter of fact, the entire month of December, we'll, we will not be in a series. What we're going to do is just take each week and really preach something that God has specifically put on our hearts. And, and for me specifically today, um, this message the, uh, uh, that I'm preaching has been something that God has been speaking to my heart for a while now and really been trying to prepare for it because um, today I wanna teach on loss. And what I know about loss is this, that, that it's something that is so real, something that so many of us have been um, affected by recently. And specifically, as I was preparing this message, I felt like the Lord wanted me to bring this message, a message of comfort and encouragement in the midst of loss. And so let's just, um, show of hands, how many of you in the last, we'll, we'll go three years, I know this COVID world we've been living in has been in the past two years, but we'll go to three years. How many of you in the last three years have experienced some loss in your life? And so here's what, here's what I wanna speak into. One, as you can see, you're not alone. You're not the only one that has gone through something. Um, my family specifically, we've lost family, we've lost friends, we've lost church family. There are some people that are, we loved with all of our heart that are not here with us anymore. I don't get to see their face every Sunday morning. We have staff members that have lost family. So like as a church, we know the world that you're in right now. I know that some of you have lost parents. Some of you have lost um, siblings. You've lost children. Some of you have lost babies that didn't even get a chance to enter into this world. It's real. And, and I don't know the extent of all the hurt and the pain that you're walking through, but what I do know is that for some reason, these holiday seasons that we're in, it heightens that emotion. For some of you, I understand that this is the first Thanksgiving, and this will be the first Christmas that you experience without that person in your life, without that person that has been in your world for so many years, and it's real. And honestly, it doesn't matter if it's the first Christmas or the first Thanksgiving or if it's the 20th Christmas or Thanksgiving, the hurt and the pain are still real. So what I wanna do this morning is just kinda talk through like, how do we deal with that loss? How do we continue to move forward? How do we find peace? How do we find hope? How do we find encouragement in the midst of the pain? And for me specifically, I, I would say this, like I, I specifically, me, I can't speak for my wife and, and, and the family that, that she has really experienced some of the loss recent, but I haven't had to experience this loss personally. We have had family members and dear friends, but in my specific family world, my parents are still sitting here, my brother, my, my kids, like, so it's hard for me sometimes to enter in, but I will say this, I've been a Jaguar fan for many years, and so, so I know a little bit about loss, and um, when I read the Bible, um, I know that my God is a God that knows about loss. Um, specifically in Psalms 38, or 34 verse 18, it says that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. So in our loss, sometimes I know that God can feel distant because you're hurting so much and the pain is so real and God, where are you right now? And I know that if I asked you to raise your hand, some of you might say, yeah, I'm in church, but but what I'm experiencing right now in my life, I, I'm struggling to find God. And I'll go as far as to say, like, some of you, your loss isn't even, isn't even death. Like, it's the loss of a relationship. Like, somebody that you used to be close with in your life, they're not in your life right now. And maybe that's a family member. And maybe it's because of the choices that they've made that 
that you're not in relationship with them right now and there's nothing that you can do about it or maybe some of you lost a job through COVID or you, or you lost some purpose and, and you're just hurting still. And I know every hurt is different and every loss is different. I understand that. I think at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what loss you've experienced. If you've got some brokenness in your heart, this verse is for you. You might be questioning, God, where are you right now? And I just need you to know he's right with you. He's there. He is close to the broken hearted. And I just need to remind somebody of that this morning. Your God is not distant. He is with you. You. And I am very aware that this is not a sermon that you're going to preach me down today. You're not going to shout, yeah, that's good. Come on, pastor. Woo! I'm hurting so bad right now. Thank you, God. I, I understand that. I like sermons like that a lot. I understand that today is just going to be one where I believe that the Lord just, just speaks to your heart. And I want to go ahead and prepare you. We're going to pray at the end, and we're going to invite anybody that is hurting and just walking through some pain and just needs just a touch from God and some peace from God. We're gonna invite you to come forward and we're gonna pray over you. I don't wanna surprise you at the end. That's what's happening. We're gonna be the church of Jesus Christ that surrounds one another. What I love about our God is that he knows our pain. He knew we were gonna experience um, hurt in this world. Jesus himself said it like this. Um, and he's really speaking about what he's about to go through and, and how he's about to die and how he's not gonna be with them much longer. And he says these words in John 16, I, I, I'm telling you all these things so that in me you may have peace. So let me, just, let me just remind you, Rise Church, if you're trying to find some type of peace in anything other than Jesus, you're not gonna find it. You're gonna keep searching for it. In me, in me, you have peace. I'm telling you all this stuff, like you're gonna go through troubles, but in me, peace is still possible. Aren't you grateful for a savior that still gives us peace? In this world, you will have trouble. And what he's talking to them specifically about is that they're about to experience some persecution their very lives are gonna be taken from them because they're preaching and proclaiming Jesus. And I think the same applies for us. I understand we're not under persecution, but we're still experiencing trouble. But take heart. Some of you in your Bibles, you need to underline this verse. You need to put this on the mirror in your bathroom. You need to put this verse somewhere that you can see it on the regular. Because in this world, you're gonna have trouble, and if Jesus ended there, then that would be really, really tough. But he doesn't end there, praise God. He says, but take heart, like hold on. Don't give up, why? Because I have overcome the world. So let's go back to the beginning in the garden because I think we need to understand something that this world that we live in was never meant to be broken. That when God created the garden, that he created it perfectly. And when he put Adam and Eve in this garden, man, there was no sin, there was no brokenness, there was no pain, there was no war in our world. There was no hatred, like it was perfect. And what we know about Adam and Eve is that they, they blew it. They sinned, they disobeyed God, they ate of the tree that they weren't supposed to eat from, and the result of that is that sin entered our world. And from that moment on, our world has been broken. And many of you would say, yeah, I've experienced the brokenness of this world. Maybe it was when you were a child and your parents got divorced. Maybe it was when you were a child and you had a parent walk out on you or you were a child and your parent passed away. Or even as an adult, you've experienced the pain and the hurt of somebody walking out on you and the loss of somebody that you love. And I think a lot of our lives have been marked even by these past two years, this COVID world that we're living in and 
Let's be real, it's really not going away anytime soon. A new variant, a new variant, a new, like it's just the reality of where we're at right now. Somebody that you know got COVID and they battled for months and still battling and you're, you're, you really don't know what's the future. I know we have family members, we have Rise Church family members right now that are still in that world. We're praying for God to do miracles in their life, to bring healing to them. But at the end of the day, like, we, we, we don't have control over any of that. And it's tough sometimes to look and go, all right, God, where are you right now? Like, what are you doing? And here's what I know, and here's what I know you know in life, that life is hard, but God is good. So, Thank you for the two claps. Miss Karen, you're awesome. Thank you so much, ladies. Life is hard. I don't have to convince any of you of that, right? You have the emotional scars of life being hard. You have the, you have the physical scars of life being difficult. So does Jesus. He, he knows that life is hard. My responsibility is to come as your pastor and not convince you that God is good. I know you know that. I, I don't think you would be here this morning if you didn't believe that God was good. My responsibility, our responsibility as a church is to collectively rally around each other in the midst of our hurt and our pain and our darkest days and just remind each other, hey, God is still good. Life is hard. It's always gonna be hard. Jesus told, it was, told us it was gonna be hard. But God is. He has always. He will always be good. And I know that sounds so cliche. I know it sounds so Christianese that in the midst of like some of your deepest hurt for you to go, oh yeah, God's good, yeah, sure. But I know down deep you know that. And I, I just want to remind you of that. John 10.10 10 gives us a clear picture of, of who God is in our lives. It says that the devil, the thief, he comes. He's got an agenda. And he is out to steal, to kill, and destroy. But Jesus also has an agenda, and he has a plan for your life. And Jesus says, but I've come that they may have life. I've been in ministry now for 17 years. And in those 17 years, I have seen the enemy kill, steal, and destroy. I have seen the enemy come into people's lives and some of them allowed it to happen. Some of them allowed the devil to come in and man, just wreak havoc on their lives by the decisions and the choices that they were making. Others and they were loving Jesus with all of their heart, and the enemy still came in. And, and Jesus is saying here, like, I came to give life, and for everybody that's experienced loss, you're thinking, where's the life, man? Because this person I love, they're not with me anymore. They're, they're gone. And the life that Jesus was talking about was never meant to be this earthly life. I need you to understand that. That's hard to grasp. That's hard to really wrestle down. But Jesus never, he never intended us to live on this earth permanently. Because there was always a better life that he had planned for us. I'm going to talk more about that in a little bit. And I look at this verse and my wife really is the one that comes to my mind. Because she is my hero in every sense of the word, because if there's anybody that's experienced hurt and pain in this world and loss, it's her. For some of you, you know a little bit of her story. For others of you, like all you need to know about my wife is this, that, that. And her mom passed away tragically when she was nine years old. And if anybody could be mad at God and, and turn their back on God, like it would be her. There's multiple other things that have happened in her life that have caused her, could cause her to be, to be angry at God. Instead, she has allowed God just to come in and, 
and be what only he can be to her. And I think for some of you in here today, like maybe that was part of your story. You got mad at God because you felt like you were dealt a bad hand. And let's be honest, some of you were. But here's what I need you to understand about hurt and pain and loss in your life, that hurt and pain will either cause you to run from God or run to God. So some of you are hurting right now. Like you, more hurt than you have ever experienced. And a lot of that is because of loss. Because somebody is no longer in your life. And I just need you to understand this. If you are so angry at God that you run from him and you run to something else, I'm telling you this, it's only going to cause more hurt and more pain in your life. But if you are able to run to God, that's where the healing comes. And the healing's not gonna be overnight. It's gonna take time, but I'm telling you, God is our peace. God is our hope. He is our healer. And I, I don't know how we can help you, but anything that we can do as a church, we, we just wanna see you run to God. I don't even care if you're running. I don't care if you're walking or crawling. Like our hope as a church is that we can come alongside you and just go, we just want to help you get to Jesus. because We know he is your only, only hope. And if you find yourself in a place right now where you're mad at God, you're angry at him, you're full of some questions, I promise you this, you're not alone. I promise you this, God's a big boy and he can handle it. He will meet you right where you are. The Problem is, for a lot of you in here that are in the midst of loss right now, whether it's been recent or even if it's been 10 plus years ago, a lot of times in our lives, we wrestle with, with why. Like, we wanna know why God would allow this. My little daughter right now is four. She loves playing the why game, right? And if you've been around a, a little kid, they love to play the why game. Well, why, why are we going to the store? Well, because we have to get some groceries. Why do we need groceries? Because we don't have any food to eat right now. Why don't we have any food to eat? Because you ate it all, you little punk. She just wants to, she knows what she's doing. Why, why? And like, we, we do the same thing. Like, God, why? God, why, why did you allow this to happen? Like, God, why? Why them? Like, God, I got a list of 10 other people that you could have taken. Like, don't look at me like you don't have that list. Like, come on, how many of you have a list of like, God, I'm cool if you take them anytime soon? Right? No, you don't do that. And the why in our lives, and it'll, it'll cripple you and paralyze you because I just believe this side of heaven, we might not ever understand the why. My wife can look back now that when she was nine years old, she lost her mom, who if you asked her, do you wish your mom was still in your life? She'd say, absolutely. But now she can look back and trace God's goodness and faithfulness on her life that she had an aunt and an uncle and a, and a grandmother and a grandfather that played a bigger role in her life because her mom was not there. And the role that they played in her life led her to where she is now. And her and I probably would have never met because I was on staff at her uncle's church. And, and, and she wasn't in the church. And when she started coming back to the church, she came to her uncle's church where I was on staff at. And that's where our paths crossed and we met. And would that have ever happened? I don't know. But the greatest thing that's ever happened in her life is me. And so God's, <laughs> you can see God's goodness there. Even in loss. And for those of you that the loss is so recent, you're not gonna see the purpose right now. And I'm not trying to tell you that's what you need to look for. I'm just trying to tell you that there is purpose in everything. And let me just, let me just make a blanket statement just so somebody can maybe have a little bit more peace. 
Like, I don't think God had to take my wife's mom when she was nine so that our paths would cross. I, I don't believe that God works like that. For anybody that's like, well, God just wanted another angel. No, he's got plenty of angels. <laughs> and that's even wrong theology. You're not going to be, you're not an angel here. Why would you be an, why? I'm all of a sudden becoming, becoming I'm an angel when I get, to, no, like that's stupid. Okay, so the next person that says that to you, God just wanted another angel. Wrong! Moron! Like, that's not how it works. You're his children here. You will be his children in heaven. You will be his son and his daughter in heaven. God just wanted them to. I, I, I don't know how God works. I don't think that God's like, I'm taking them. I think this world is broken. I think that death happens. This world was never meant to be our permanent home. Because this world is broken, death happens. Because God is so good, he's already got a plan ahead that this is not the end. And I've talked with so many people in our church and friends of ours that have had loved ones pass away and even um, one of our family members. And I even put a Facebook post out yesterday just like, how are you finding comfort right now? And so many people are saying, I'm finding comfort in the promise of heaven. I'm finding comfort that this world is not our permanent home, that the hurt and the pain that I have to walk through here, that it, it doesn't have to last forever. And I just want to give you a couple verses in closing, and then we're going to pray together. The first one is this for anybody that's grieving right now. It's First Thessalonians that says this, we don't grieve as those without hope. Like, you're okay, it's okay that you're grieving. That's perfectly normal. And don't let somebody come alongside you and tell you that the, you, you, well, you need to stop grieving. I, I, don't, I think we grieve because we love so much. And, and your grief only reflects the amount of love that you had for somebody in your life. And so it's okay to grieve. It's okay if you grieve the rest of your life. You, you just get to do it with a little bit of hope. Because if that person in your life knew Jesus, then praise God. Praise God there's going to be a holy reunion one day. John 16, Jesus said these words, hey, you will grieve, but here's the good news. Your grief will turn to joy. And again, this is the same text of John 16, where he was talking about in this world, you're gonna have trouble, but, but there's peace and I've overcome the world. He was talking about how he was gonna die and he was telling them like, you're not gonna see me anymore, but then you will see me. And so you're gonna grieve, but then your grief will turn into joy. And I know for the disciples, they only had to wait three days. For some of you, like it's been longer than three days. Like Jesus rose from the dead and they were like, you're alive. And that's when their grief turned into joy. And for some of you, it's been longer than three days. Maybe it's been three years. Maybe it's been 30 years. Maybe it'll be a lot longer than that. But come on, there is a day when your grief on this earth will be no more. and It will turn to joy in the presence of God and in those family members and those friends that you love. And I take so much comfort from these verses in Revelation. I'm gonna invite the band to come up. This is John, the revelator. What you need to understand about the book of Revelation is there's a lot of things we don't understand, but, but, but John got a sneak peek into heaven and he just ferociously wrote down everything that he saw and some of the stuff like you read it and you know, it's end time stuff, it's the dragon and the beast and like we don't, we don't get all of that, but like it's happening because he saw it so it's gonna happen one day and what he saw here, what he what he heard, he wrote down, and I pray this brings you comfort today. He says, I heard a loud voice from the throne. And this is what it said. Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people. And here it is right here. And he, God, he's going to dwell with them. We don't use that word dwell very much, right? How many of you are going to your dwelling place later on today? Where are we eating lunch? At the dwelling place. 
talking about the home, the home of heaven, that he's gonna be with us and, and we're gonna be with him. And here's what you need to remember about heaven is that God created it, meaning he prepared this place for us because he wants us to be with him. And so for those of you that have loved ones and friends that have gone on before you, like they're in that place that he created. They're with him right now. I pray that brings you hope today. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. And then he goes on to say, he will wipe every tear from their eyes. He'll do it. Every tear. He wipes it. There's gonna come a day when all the tears that you've cried here on this earth, he'll wipe away. And there will be no more death. There'll be no more mourning. There'll be no more crying. And there will be no more pain. I understand you weren't sure if you were supposed to clap there. There will be a day. Not today, maybe. Probably not tomorrow. Probably not Christmas. Probably not next Christmas. Probably not that birthday that you can't celebrate because they're not here and not that anniversary. It won't be those days. But there will be a day. You mark it down. And it'll be in the presence of Jesus. And he'll look at you and go, no need for tears anymore. No need for sadness. This is the home that I created. That, that broken world was never supposed to be broken. This is perfection. We will be in his presence forever. The ones that we love. What I wanna do today just be the church of Jesus Christ. Surround my brothers and my sisters who are hurting today. God loves you. He's close to the brokenhearted. We just want to rally around you. So if that's you today, without hesitation, would you just come down front right now? Thanks for watching today. If you'd like to continue the conversation, you can like us on Facebook or follow us on Instagram. If our church has had an impact on you and you'd like to support all that Jesus is doing in this place, you can do so by going to rise-church.com slash give and select the giving option that best suits you. Thanks so much for joining us online and we hope you have a blessed week.